you open the Facebook live now? Yes. Wait. Yes, can. No problem. Okay. I have to share the site, right? Sure. Yes, now it's working and I, I'm watching on the Facebook Live also. Okay, two more minutes. <laughs> I'm go to the toilet first. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Right now, it's shared both in ASEAN Science Diplomats and uh, in ECC and ECCRI Facebook site. Where? ECCRI site and uh, ASEAN website. It's online. We are non-profit. Okay, I think it's already uh, 11. Yes, uh, can we see? Yes. Shall we, shall we start? Please. Yeah, because it's already 11 o'clock. Yeah. Oh, can you please show the, the poster? <laughs> <clears throat> Are we also live on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right, so let's start. All right. Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. So welcome to the 20th Durfer Show webcast lecture series. All right. Um, so for today, we're very, we're very happy to, uh, to have Her Excellency, the former Undersecretary of the Department of Energy, uh, Her Excellency, Mary Rose Magsaysay. Hello, Mary Rose. How are you? <laughs> All right. So, and definitely we also have, we're also very lucky to have two fantastic speakers from Malaysia and from Indonesia. All right. So, Mary Rose, please. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Glenn. Dr. Glenn Banaguas is a very famous scientist here in our country. My co alumni from Harvard uh, Kennedy School of Government also. So, today, I think uh, it would be nice to give more time for our speakers. And uh, today is the Science Amazing Men in Science Sustainability. So, you know, we have to say hello to, uh, to the world after COVID-19. 
so it's not enough that we are always looking at the health sector for uh, changes and uh, um, other things that we feel are important in our life. So we look at the other factors that affect the economy and our world, and most important is that we have power and energy, and it is it's actually sustainable in this world. And what are the ASEAN scientists doing about um, handling the challenges after COVID for the sustainability of power and energy? So um, there is such a thing as sustainability concept of research and innovation in higher education institutes, where uh, one of our dear colleagues here from the energy sector will be talking about. So the issues are low cost technology on energy, water, waste, air quality, and things that are shared with you, things that are shared by everybody in the world, wherever you are. So um, about this uh, technologies and changes, there has to be community acceptance. And uh, as you know, that the price points are the most important factors uh, that will fuel our economy to move faster, to gain the confidence of the world, to move on. So, um, also, uh, we have to remember that the universities are also hubs and centers to reach uh, into the future for our societies to be aware of, of uh, very many moving, uh, moving factors and moving parts of making everything work together. So without further ado, I will uh, start to introduce our um, two very important scientists for today from Asia. And uh, I will first uh, read through uh, the short bios of, uh, these, are, these are short compared to their, the things that they've done in uh, the world, right? So um, I will read first through our Fadil, uh, very short bio. Very, very short. <laughs> and then I would thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mary, and the rest. Go ahead. Uh, thank you again to uh, Dr. Glenn. Uh, so this is a very good opportunity for us. Uh, it is a very indeed. Uh, we have to share something relevant to our actually the current issue on the COVID or pandemics uh, nowadays uh, in uh, around the world. So actually, um, my position is actually on the sustainability part, which actually bring some of the uh, what we call that the well-being to what we call that for institutions and what exactly the um, integration by university around the world is actually happening now and what exactly they're doing and in order to combat and also to mitigate some strategies. So this is maybe one of the biggest topics uh, and will be shared uh, among uh, us today. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll read a little, a little bit something about you. Um, Dr. Maud Fadil M. D. Dean is a, a doctorate holder in a cur and currently working as an academic administration research fellow under Sustainable Development Goals, the SDG, of which the action plan in youth platform is in order to be able to produce leader champions with green and sustainable mindset in the near future. Mostly, he is participating in environmental nexus work under energy and climate change, waste management and waste wastewater application, which usually involves quadruple helix bridges among stakeholders. He's also joining, so you're across pollinators. He's also joining ASEAN science diplomats to establish the youth and sustainability work within the country. He is also engaged in various networks under science to action with regional international platforms that could enhance the current issues and future challenges. There are many possibilities to inculcate the revisions of work, especially to refine the aspect of responsibility mm -hmm. to bring the sustainable development goals in the different interdisciplinary work. Okay, that's nice. You give focus structure. He is passionate into the subject on the current developments of principles in environmental engineering aspects such as innovative decision making in sustainable environment uh, also on big data and uh, some yes more yes therefore he created both living laboratories and youth community chapter in all sessions towards sdg now let me just give a few 
uh, I, let me read through Dr. Engineer Dennis Chidki Fared. Oh, wow. So, Dennis, uh, Dr. Denny is a senior researcher in material technology at the Research Center for Physics, which is RCC of LIPI, a doctoral graduate from Hirosaki University in Japan with a research background in energy materials for fuel cells, renewable energy development. Then he continued research in the same field as postdoctoral research fellow at the National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology, ASCE, also in Japan. Then Dr. Denny has a research interest related to the development of green and energy materials. He has expertise in advanced material synthesis based on metal oxides and metals and microstructural characterization systems and its electrical phenomena. Wow. Currently, Denny is the head of the fuel cell and hydrogen material research group of RCC LIPI. Denny also has expertise in ISO 50001-2018 energy management system and ISO EIC 17025 and management system, okay, uh, in 2017, lab standard and LIPI associate patent drafter. Denny is currently also the LIPI research assessor team for researcher functional certification professional. Denny was the ASEAN COSC ambassador for the ASEAN Energy Transition Group in Brunei Darussalam related to sustainable and green hydrogen. In addition, he was the initiator and visiting researcher in the Global Research Collaboration Program Joint Research Project with the University of Tokyo, Japan. Denny has also been visiting scholar at Western Michigan University of the United States related to energy storage materials in the tailor-made courses, course partnership activities sponsored by the World Bank. Denny is also currently um, part of the ASEAN Science Program. Then this is a gem, okay? Whereas the ongoing research activities on progress are related to the supporting um, supporting the COVID-19 uh, that are that is funded by the LIPA, which includes UV met and disinfector masks. But I will give the floor first, of course, to Professor Maud Fadil before we go back to you. Dr. Fadil, it's your turn. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, this is a very lovely uh, for the intro. And maybe to have a warm up session for all of us. So I do hope that this is a kind of a very interesting point for us to maybe have uh, some discussion point after afterwards after the session. But anyway, uh, the topic is a very quite uh, interesting. Uh, as uh, you can see here, the 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 theme here is actually on the say hello to the new world. Is actually, but the the new world here is actually we um we are focusing today is on the higher education of institution which means that it is related to um, universities and also other kind of high school, something like that. So we know that in a very um, demanding uh, era uh, uh, during this, uh, what we call that, uh, the COVID-19, whatever it is, it is about uh, some uh, problems that we occur and we also uh, actually accepting a few, uh, few new things that maybe will enhance and also accelerate uh, some of the process here, right? And uh, sorry, uh, I think maybe something wrong with my, okay. Okay, good, eh? All right, so everywhere in, in the world right now, I call it the scientists in the post. It means that uh, we are actually an uncertainties. We are actually exploring. We are actually under a very pressurized, uh, uh, environments to ensure that what exactly uh, the uh, pandemics is actually will uh, try to uh, uh, influence our life. And this is actually um, what we call that the uh, most of the uh, activities stopping, uh, especially because we are waiting for the vaccine, especially for the COVID-19, something like that. 
But do remember, this is not only the beginning of this kind of out. We do have a kind of these things maybe uh, 20, 100 years ago about this kind of issue. And uh, the COVID-19 is actually because of in the modern era and because of the globalization is happening and people traveling a lot. So it's actually bring a lot of uh, what we call that uh, remarkable impacts to our uh, global uh, association, something like that. So in that kind of manners, for example, in order for us to explore scientists everywhere, not only in higher education, but I, be I do believe that in some other organizations also looking for the same, right? Especially uh, there are some issues people are already been uh, explored and discussed whether this kind of uh, viruses infected from the air travel, for example. The, the particle pollution also will one of the major factor to infect people. Even uh, maybe people curious about whether this kind of infection is not only based on water, they can live anywhere in around the world, around our environment. So this is a kind of what we call that a scientist under pause. So people actually try to, to make sure they will understand and they want to, to do some solution on that. Okay. And of course, uh, there's some other uh, potential that very important for us. And as the, under the higher education of institution, for example, so we are looking this kind of connectivity because we want to, uh, what we call that, uh, try to link try to uh, contribute something. And that's why if you go to any other platform, especially under uh, the, what we call that, the health and medicine, for example, so they are looking very strong cooperation between other partners, especially to see this kind of the outbreak, this kind of the infections. And you can see that the most problem, if you can look into this kind of category, it means that the intensified agriculture why this is a very very uh, important because uh, in a few weeks ago i uh, actually wait wait uh mod fadil please stop uh, i would like to request everyone please uh turn off or unmute your your audio because we can hear your voice thank you very much yeah, please mute please mute yeah, please mute please please mute your your audio please Thank you, thank you, Glenn. Okay, anyway. Uh, we, can, we can still hear, we can still hear the voice. All right, maybe the, the, the administrator could mute the audio yes. of the participants. Thank you. Is it clear now? Okay, all right. So um, these factors is uh, very uh, important and crucial for us, especially when the transmission. Uh, the problems that especially in ASEAN, most of our activities depends on agriculture and also uh, food security, for example. So this is the reason why there are some uh, few studies conducted in order to see whether there are some kind of uh, restriction, there are some kind of uh, transmission will be occur when we are actually dealing with the agriculture and also the livestock. And there are some kind of evidence actually now promoting and also uh, publish, especially under UN uh, environment programs. And this is actually one part of that very uh, focal point, especially uh, for ASEAN. And we actually uh, try to make sure that we understand that kind of situation. That's number one. And number two, uh, of course, uh, if you look into the illegal regulated wildlife trading, it has happened, I think, uh, more years ago. And because of, we know that the COVID-19 is because of, people believe that it's because of the wildlife. We're treating as exotic food, for example. So this is also uh, one of the factors we'll consider another sustainability impacts, especially towards to someone actually hunting this kind of wildlife and also changes of the lifestyle. So because of the COVID-19, that's the reason why people now try to stop this kind of activity. But are they actually stopping really? So this is one of the questions, the connectivity between these. Okay. Uh, another one is about the, uh, what we call that, the um, expectation, right? This kind of, uh, I think I do believe many of us actually aware about the droppings of our economy, uh, actually the instability of prices, for example. And there are some kind of oscillating, 
somewhere in terms of the sectors. The sector is actually having some problems, shutdown on the operation, bankruptcy, jobless, especially from the higher education when the student graduate. So where do you want to go after after the COVID, for example? Because there are so many fact, uh, sectors actually try to adapt the new things. And also um, our university itself, because we are demanding towards to online, digital university, for example. So this is a kind of uh, domino effects will be, and will be actually affecting in the future. Uh, not actually long, but maybe due to few, uh, what we call that, um, uh, important uh, sectors that will be creating uh, the reaction towards that one. So as higher education institution, this is actually the major issue, especially when we want to bring, as I, I, th I think Mary already explained, that university should be as the quadruple helix, integration between government, between the industry, between uh, 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 what we call community services, whatever it is, it's a kind of, you know, uh, university should be part, should be what we call that uh, active uh, in order to make sure that everybody uh, been affected and how to solve that one. So this is the reason why we expecting uh, from what uh, the impacts occurs. And from that, uh, we know that and we also realize uh, this kind of uh, what we call that uh, importance uh, for us uh, to see this kind of activities. Uh, this is another issue that uh, protections, uh, SOPs and uh, guideline and procedure Everywhere is actually now uh, available. Uh, you, you can download it from the internet, whatever it is. And do believe us actually in our own uh, universities, our own communities, our own local government. They actually now try to implement what exactly the real situation. So that's why this is the reason why all country right now, they are providing a guidelines, proper guidelines, proper mitigation and proper strategies. So everything's now, people already change because of the COVID. Because before this, we don't aware of these things. We don't aware about the hygienic. We don't aware maybe about these kind of issues. But because of the COVID-19 and the pandemic, now people try to adapt uh, a new things, a new norms. Actually, they need to do this thing. They need to understand and they need to protect not only others, but protect themselves, but also this will protect others. So this is what's the expectation that may be uh, one of the uh, biggest, what we call that turning point for us to regulate something for our higher education institution. This is one point that I would like to throw this issue. And because of that, you can see that we also accept, right? After that kind of situation, after that kind of incidents, we have to protect our environment. We have to protect our life, uh, wildlife. We have to protect our uh, biodiversity, for example. So this is a kind of things. And because of, uh, I think uh, a few uh, months ago, when uh, people are already have a kind of uh, reports on air quality, water quality, for example. So they report that now the air quality becomes better. The water quality becomes better. And why? Why is happened? Because of there is no, uh, the sector is already stopping. The point source of pollution already stopping. So people already actually now try to adapt the new things. But believe me, after this, uh, when we come up with a kind of solution, especially on the SOP, and uh, maybe most of the government now very aware to protect the environment, you will see that there are a little bit changes. So in terms of sustainability, the forces drive is actually there because of the pandemic. We cannot say that the pandemic is actually bad things, but it's also the good things. So the good things here is actually try to make, to change our lifestyle immediately. We have to do now. So this is what uh, the most uh, uh, issue that actually been discussed and argued and debate in higher education institution. Why? Because we are the changes of institutions. We are actually the transformation agent to others. So this is why uh, we bring this kind of issue in different platforms in order people will ensure that this is the, the good things for us to, to start. So that's why uh, I would like to share one of our initiative uh, by now under the higher education institution. We have a My Sustainability University Network. 
and this is actually promoting in Malaysia. I do believe that in other countries also doing the same, but I would like to highlight in Malaysia what we are doing. We have actually eight Malaysian members under the higher education of institution who actually will engage with the local stakeholders, try to do more engagement series, and also we are uh, come up with some kind of solution during the conference or, or the workshop. Why? Because we want to do the leading laboratories in order to, to make sure that we understand how to bring the issue on the sustainability and how to actually communicate with people. We call it a science diplomacy there. So, but this kind of uh, uh, sustainability always actually been disappointed because people thinking sustainability is always environment. They always thinking that it should also link to the environment. Environment is only one of the pillars. But we have another two pillars actually under the sustainability. So that's the reason why we are focusing on strengthening the university capacities, which means that the research elements there, the teaching element there, especially during the COVID-19 and what happened afterwards. So this is what we are now regulating. We are trying to promote and try to engage more with people. Okay. With that, actually, as actually Mary already mentioned about the SDG, and I do believe that many other universities around the world is now working on that. And believe me, uh, during uh, the, the first uh, influence of factors from the pandemics happens, people already uh, make a report in terms of changes of this kind of SDG, especially in terms of the indicator and also. But don't worry about that kind of changes. What we have to do now is the keyword here is leave no one behind left no one behind for example so means that nobody's actually been uh, um, uh, not included in the system we include every single system so that's the reason why in the COVID-19 issue scientists having some issues university has to take a part very active part what to do so this is what the explanation towards that so SDG is actually to engage people more to understand people how and what to do and how to do something like that. So that's the reason why uh, maybe I will focus a few things about the research and maybe this is the most important things. And whether this is kind of SDG is actually working uh, synchronously or synergize what we are doing now, it is another issue. Like for example, like under SDG 1 until the SDG 15, we recorded many things, many kind of changes will be happen. Especially if I want to uh, link from the SDG 4, for example, right? Accessibility to the ordinary education. Remember, before the COVID-19, people can come to universities. They can do a kind of uh, all fashions uh, teaching. They can uh, make it a gathering in one uh, room, for example, more than 40, uh, until sometimes 300 people. But after the COVID, the new SOP is there, and you still have to think. Maybe the, the, the most accessible to uh, students actually by the online digital campus. But what happened to the student actually don't have the access of the internet, especially towards to the uh, low income country. Uh, so I'm talking about the around the world. So now it's a, a little, a little bit changes will happen and the new SOP and the new norms will be happens. So now, uh, nowadays people try to reach this kind of community and to give them free education. And we also have a free university. Actually, people can come to the university. If you are eligible from the low income country, you and you don't have So this is a kind of things that, uh, what one of the reason why COVID-19 actually changed of us a very, very, uh, what we call that significant impacts. So because of that, and I also learned from actually the ASEAN diplomat. So this is one of the very important aspects because uh, nowadays we know that uh, people actually looks into what exactly the higher education, what's their rules, what their responsibility. But I do believe that when I actually joined the ASEAN diplomat, for example, it's actually to reach everyone. It's actually to uh, understand what exactly the science diplomat is it's all about, we're talking about the communication, how to translate the communication. So one of the communication must be translated from our leadership. And the leadership is coming from our 
ourselves. For example, we actually train ourselves to be as a leader. Student also, we will train them to be as a leader. So now on the COVID-19 is actually changed the mindset of the student. You not only to get a certificate from the university, but you must be as a leader. Whether it is a leader in your uh, university or leader in country or religion or sectors, for example. So this is one uh, our passionate, especially in UTM, we are highlighting the same. So that's why uh, this is the reason why we have a CEO of faculty program, similar like ASEAN Diplomat, but this is actually towards to the industry level. So we expose them to the industry. So young, uh, for example, the age between uh, 20 to 35, for example, or up to 40 years old. So we consider them as a young. So this is one of the biggest impacts will change us. Okay. Um, this is one of uh, the com uh, communication uh, on our project. And this is maybe good uh, to share among of you. Uh, actually, um, like one of my project is on the zero waste, right? Uh, uh, actually, in uh, COVID-19, we, re we received that uh, very significant impacts. The waste is actually reduced. The is reduced. Okay, this is what the indicator to us. The indicator here because of people try to limit the stock. They try to limit their feed stock, right? For example, like when we are going out from, from our home, we try to eat more, but sometimes not eat uh, effectively. We eating with a kind of residue, we, and then we dispose that one. So once we have lockdown in our home, we try to manage our food shelf. We try to actually what the, the cooking we should prepare, and that will actually significantly reduce our feed stock. And this is a good turning point for us, especially if you want to uh, ensure that we can achieve the zero waste management, not zero waste, but zero waste management, the management itself. So if we can reduce the management, it means that we can uh, effectively save the cost and the cost will transfer back to the economy. So this is something like we are focusing in our uh, higher education institution. We have one project on that. And we are now trying to make sure that we can reach this zero waste management 2022. But I'm not so sure, uh, but I do uh, believe that realize this is also good because of the COVID people try to make a new SOP, uh, new norms. So maybe they will not waste the waste. So this is something that very relevant for us, especially. Okay. And also this is one of my research and also the other research also. Uh, in our universities, especially try to convert. This is one of the articles, actually, especially this is in Malay version. Anyway, in uh, universities, especially in uh, UTM, we have few people actually working on this. Try to waste, turning up to compost, turning up to add a fit, uh, fit stock, for example. So we do have kind of activities. And this economy will bring again to the income to the university. So university will have the internal circulation of economy. So this is what, uh, what, what, what we are thinking. University should be as a transformation agent and UTM is one. So this is one of the reason why we should be more promoting ourselves. Okay. And, um, this is one of also the project on the river to protect the river. As I mentioned earlier that, uh, during the COVID-19 water become more People may be stopping pollute the river, but what happened after the pandemic? This is the new norm also. So we are culturing our uh, young one, our student also because of the COVID. This is actually your responsibility because you are the leader. And that's why the ASEAN diplomats teach us and transform us to be as a leader. And thank you again to Dr. Glenn. This actually, actually welcome us. And we have a few batches actually graduated from that kind of program. And this is what happened and what's actually bring back to our university. So we have to be at like this one. Okay. And we also know that uh, uh, everywhere is actually working very significantly on the changes of these things. And this is one of the turning point, not only on the research, I will uh, later on to come up with the, uh, with this kind of things, 
but this is again on the problems and what the procedure that we are looking. And I do believe that everybody is doing this one. Visualize all the things uh, from uh, what you should protect, what should wear, what you should when you enter the UT. This is one of the very big impacts, right? And believe me, in UTM especially, we have many innovation during the pandemic, during the COVID. One of the things that we become as a frontliner innovations, especially towards to what we call that this kind of uh, innovation of uh, face shield, for example, and uh, the incubator. That one is a very low cost. They actually, they don't have to prepare much cost for that one. And we also actually spend this kind of things and we give free to our frontliners. Believe me, the frontliner is actually exhausted the sources for this kind of things. But once HEI is coming with the innovation, it helps. Thank you again for this kind of innovation. The next one is about on the robotics, delivery, food de uh, delivery uh, from the frontliner innovations. Dr. Yo, uh, Yong, for example, is one of a very key point in our uh, innovation. How to make sure that we protect our frontliner? The frontliner is not doing that kind of job, but the robotics do that things. So it means that the augment, augmentation uh, reality, the what we call the AI technology is there. So it's actually another an, an, uh, enhancement to our university to start and to kick off everything from what we have. So this is one of the uh, successful story that we have, especially towards to uh, protect the frontliners. It's not the human, but it's actually uh, the robots will do the jobs. So this is actually very, very nice. Another one under the aerosol box. This is a very important aspect because we know that uh, we have uh, 2,000, 3,000 tests per day for the COVID-19, right? So how to ensure that the protect, uh, to protect our frontliners, to protect our, uh, what we call that, the scientists, actually when they are making the swap test, they, they're making a PCR, something like that. So we are restricting or limiting the sources for that kind of boxes. So what we are doing, we collaborate with the medical experts and to provide the aerosol box to the healthcare workers. So this is uh, the innovation from Dr. Wong in, from UTM. And this is a very good, uh, actually, um, uh, innovation. That one of the examples, right? And again, uh, during the COVID-19, people aware about the online, aware about the teaching via online, aware about the uh, distancing learning, for example. Not only the social distancing, but also the distancing learning by itself. So you can see here, we have many things. And I do believe that in many platforms, in other higher education in, uh, universities also doing the same things. And one of the things that we are promoting here, we have a special from the SDSN, Sustainable Development Solution Network. Every week, they're actually promoting the event, promoting the reports, what happens, what happened, and what we have to do. So bear in mind out there, people actually try to mitigate, try to solve the issue by engaging many people coming. This is the reason why this is one of the promotion. And this is what the things that we have to do. As HEIs, as universities, we have to be as a frontliners to educate people, to be as a, uh, a transformation agent, to be as a leader, uh, especially in terms of this kind of mitigation and strategies. And this is my last, that actually the pandemic COVID-19 is not only giving us headaches in terms of economy, in terms of the environment, everything, but this is a well-being, the human uh, mentality, for example. You can see that people now feel more stressed, angry, uh, uncomfortable, and those, the empathy and the work-life balance. Because now on most of uh, our sector still uh, actually uh, closed. So we are working from home. So we have to engage with our kids. We have to engage with our family. At the same time, we have to go work. Like myself, I'm actually as a lecturer. I have to do a kind of series of meetings in my home, for example. At the same time, maybe I have to bear in mind I have a kids. So I have also to take care of them. So this is some issues that we have and uh, we have to admit by nowadays and also uh, eating more uh, like dr glenn said he said uh, he more fatter during the COVID, something like that and also we actually receiving many fake news uh, this is the most important because people now having more times 
uh, with this kind of activities. So some fake news actually distribute among us, disseminate among us. And this is the things that we have to bear in mind. I think that's all from me. Uh, thank you again for this opportunity. I back to Mary. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that was very entertaining. And we have a lot of comments here. On uh, they, are, they are all agreeing on everything that you're saying, which is uh, what everybody is feeling. And it's nice for you to have openly spoken about it. At least they feel that they're not the only ones feeling all of these things. And it makes them a little bit uh, more sure of the kind of future they may have because people like you are working. So I will not uh, take too much of your time. And I would, of course, uh, start to uh, ask Dr. Uh, Danny to take the floor and inspire us with his health to the world. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Dr. Denny. Yes. Okay. Uh, I would like to share my PowerPoint. Okay. Can you see my slide? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Mary, to uh, giving me a time. My name is Denny. I'm from the Center for Physical EP. So in this uh, morning, I would like to share about the topic, how to deal with COVID-19. Maybe this is uh, more on the technological aspect, but some on the mitigation or like uh, in the campaign also I highlighted in here. No problem. I mean, uh, I, would, I would like to uh, balance with uh, diplomatic issues also. Okay. Um, so I would like, I, I will talk about uh, focusing on the three main topic on the SDG agenda in here, uh, on the related with the good health and well-being, and then number seven, operable and clean energy and the climate action. Okay, as per today, um, Actually, in, uh, in our country, in Indonesia, we are starting uh, the new norm. Just for today, like in my office, uh, when I go to the, my office, is very heavy traffic, headache. I'm I'm stuck in the traffic. Actually, before I'm really uh, curious that I cannot uh, come on time, <laughs> but finally, yeah, I, I can hear. Okay, so I, I will focusing on these three main topic on the SDG agenda. This is just for your information that the COVID-19, uh, the number of COVID-19 in Indonesia actually still increased the number, but uh, yeah. However, we, we, we have to face the new norm with whatever it is, we have to deal with it. You can see this is the island of Indonesia. The green one we mean is with safe area, the yellow and the, the orange one is almost dangerous. The East Java is the most COVID-19 populated like here. So Glenn, you don't worry if you want to go to Jakarta, I think there are also some SOP. Area. But as you, as I saw you before, the the plot of Indonesia is okay. Before, like uh, the SOP, actually in my incident, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, the 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 to uh, following uh, is the research from uh, our associate lockdown in the effect of work from home due to the plastic waste all the information in Bahasa Indonesia So as you can see from here, in the uh, lockdown or the partial lockdown, and uh, 
for for the food online also like from GoFood like this one also increase increasing very uh, significant. Okay, as you can see here, the So everything so this is from this number the second of can lean auto increasing mini so this me This is the uh, daily. So it's the Uh, okay, the mass. So can you hear? Dennis, yes, Denny, you, uh, your connection. Please check your yeah. connection. Thanks. Yes. Yes. And we'll probably remove the video first so that we can. Okay. Yes, yeah, we can hear you. Yes, yeah. we can hear you. Thank you. And for yeah, okay, this is the step uh, from the host in the three and this and then to start going for the. Uh, Okay, this is the Miller only the Miller. The can you can you move closer to the mic? Also, from the, okay, okay, sorry. As uh, as we can see here from the the report of from the Wuhan China, the the increasing of the waste is significantly, and this is just uh, the information about the hospital in Indonesia who can, uh, we uh, that can uh, treat the COVID nineteen patient. This is in the Matra area, this is Java area, in Kalimantan, Bali. Kalimantan, Bali, and Bok, this is in the Asasi Maluku. Uh, as we can, uh, as, as before stated that we have to Right. So, uh, the, uh, the third party that from the hospital. Actually, there are three types of the solid waste from the COVID-19. We can categorize wastewater, domestically solid waste, and medical dangerous toxic material. Okay. Okay. From the uh, from the China case, it's about um, almost 5,000 ton per, per day. 
and then increase to 8,000 per day during the COVID-19. So this also as the uh, for the preparation for our country due to this condition, and we are expecting about almost 9,000 day, all, all, almost 9,000 9, ton per day for the waste. And yeah, as you can see, the from November 19 until March, the increasing from the personal protection equipment waste significantly increase. Medical waste also increase. The total from them also, yeah, you can see from each month is very significant. This is just the protocol how to treat the um, what. In Indonesia, information about the different technology that can um, overcome uh, the infectious, the serpent like the needle, pathologic, pharma pharmacy, genotoxic, genotoxic and From Can you speak louder than Dr. Dennis. In the hospital and how Can you speak louder, Dennis? Uh, Dr. Dennis. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes. We just have to speak louder. Yes, ma'am. Okay, just louder, louder. Thank you. Um okay. Okay, so this is uh the government also do such uh, the social media campaign for uh, for the society on how to deal with their uh, solid waste like the mask like this one okay we're going legend yeah, we have such kind of this potential but only pot uh in installed about 7.5 percent and etc you can see from here this is the renewable energy resource that we have in indonesia okay and this is the information about the capacity of until 2019 uh, 70 gigawatt renewable energy uh, and the target the, of this year 2020 is increasing to almost 75 gigawatt and uh, this target okay this is the electrification ratio in indonesia as we can see here and there are some province in kalimantan in and Papua uh, already in the green zone. Uh, for the black zone, meaning uh, the electrification is more than uh, 95 percent. Of course, we also have, uh, we also have the mission is very important. And in the other case, the fossil fuel will be decreased. As you can see here from the graph, that the, the fossil fuel, the fossil fuel dependency until uh, 2019 is about 4.3 percent, and we expecting targeting this year into uh, nine or percent. This one, and we expect that the energy will increase more. Okay. Renewable energy. Uh, 
uh, and then how the PTT impact on the energy sector. So as uh, this one, decided that the COP19 as a national decision. Asian country also already decided like that. for social distancing and we causing limitation on social activities. Okay. Um, high impact to the economic sector. Uh, power demand reduction. Okay. Okay. As you can see here, uh A very significant impact due to the energy sector, coal, gas, oil, and everything. The the fossil base, uh, mainly the fossil base, is uh, decrease, except the renewable one, increase. And this is uh, the 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 plot from the other country also show that the resource also decrease, the use of the energy resource decrease, and the significant reduction on transportation activities, oil. Use also drop, oil price also jump down globally. As we can see here, this is the transportation activities going down and the number of flights also going down in every country like this. And as we can see, January. This is the and this is the uh, uh, at this year it is uh, expected will be reduced about 20 percent comparing to, to 2019. So at the 2020 forecast will be at this point. So we also expect more lower. This is just the daily greenhouse green uh, house gas emission or CO2. Uh, comparing uh, 2019 and 2020, the 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 gray one is 2000 the last year, and the uh, the red one is the okay. We can hear you then. Or increase more so make the sustainable of hello can you hear me yes can we ask uh hello? UTM to okay. yes we can hear you okay just to make it make it close and a little bit loud go ahead Having some technical difficulties. Let me ask. Okay. Uh, Hello. You can remove okay. your yes. You can you can remove your video so that the streaming will become uh, there will be better latency. Less latency. I mean. Okay. We cannot hear. Uh, Glenn. Glenn. Yes, I'm listening. Yes, I'm listening. I had to remove my, my video because, you know, for, for the stream lining, we're having some de uh, technical difficulties. Uh, uh, yes, Denny, are you back? You have to yeah. remove your video. Yes, Dr. Dennis, can you remove your video so that the streaming can be uh, less, can be better? Just your video. Stop sharing first. Ah, yeah, no, 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 no. You cannot not share. You have to share. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Please share again okay. your presentation. Please share okay. it again. Thanks. Okay. Uh, wait a moment. Mm -hmm. me 
I think you unmute, Mary. Yes, you can hear me. Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay. So this, okay, sorry for the such technical difficulties. So this is the renewable energy capacity is increasing uh, during to, uh, also the forecasting from 2020 to 2024. So we also expect that this number more. So the environment will be more. And this is the capacity, the detailed data about from 2020 to 2024. Uh, we, we already preparing uh, in order to uh, deal with this uh, issue. <clears throat> okay. uh, this is economic recovery. To the impact on the um, okay. Uh, this also will reevaluate on the on the capacity of the electricity in Indonesia. We uh, I will pick this one because that's uh, too technical, and I'm going to the next agenda on the health and well-being. Okay, maybe um, some of you already familiar with this uh, material that uh, like the plastic, how, how long the, the coronavirus can uh, resist uh, on the surface of such kind of this material, like in the plastic, on the medical glove, on the paper, wood, uh, glass, on the steel and the aluminum. Like this one. There are many, there are a constraint time that the COVID, uh, uh, that the virus can stand, the coronavirus for plastic five day and etc as you can see here the, the the shortest one maybe the aluminium two to eight eight hour and the steel for 48 hour or two days this uh just my i would like to share my current research my our uh, our contribution for the covid 19 uh preparedness like this one so uh we are focusing on the developing of the copper material as you can see, this is just uh, some reference uh, showing that the how this uh, copper can uh, affect into the bacteria, like that one. Eh? Um, there, there are some uh, good journal actually that show that uh, this copper also already done, the already researched by them. But the, of course, there are many uh, various. Uh, until 2011, there are about 300 types of the alloy for the antimicrobial agent. And this due to the, the activation of this material, and of course, each uh, bacteria and each um, uh, alloying material has the different effect. The uh, reference that's showing of the copper for the, the COVID-19 or the SARS-CoV-2 virus, this one. They are also showing that uh, the previous virus uh, due to the flu pandemic of two to nine can destroy uh, only in the minutes by this uh, pure copper. But, and from this reference, number four, they're also showing that less than five minutes. Okay, this is just showing you that the, the differentiate between the medical mask and the the cloth mask, the, the, no, the normal one. The efficiency on the filtering, and all, uh, as we can see here, for sure, the medical mask is much higher than. Make it louder, Dr. Denny. Which up to seven. Can you hear me? Okay, Dennis, we cannot hear you. Yeah, from this. Uh, yes, yes. Still. Yes, we can hear. We can, we can hear you, but uh, don't make your voice. Uh, just go on, go on. Okay. Uh, as you can see from this slide. Okay. Okay. Diameter, uh, the size of the SARS-CoV-2 is about less than one micron. It's very small. So meaning 
the the opportunity or the potential that the, the this virus can passing through this mass is very high. Normal like this one is about 10, 30 percent or more, or for the medical mass maybe about 10 percent. Meaning, a virus can passing through this mass, and this is our novelty, our current uh, research progress that. The, the conventional cloud mass we embedded with uh, with the active material, contact killer material from the um, from the copper uh, with different two type. Now one is in the seed type, another is just embedded directly into the cloth. And this is just the mechanism how the virus coronavirus copper. Uh, and this is the mechanism until this uh, de degenerate or die. This is of the material, the cloth, conventional cloth mass. So we just want to show that the, the pore size is very big. As I mentioned before, the sarc of two diameter is less than one micron. Okay. And then, after it coated with the pore size, or the yeah, the average of pore size is much decreasing, and not only the pore size actually. In here, we also um, make the active material that have the effect killing the the virus. This is just another. The for the embedded uh, seeds material, you can see that the the pore diameter is very big. For sure, uh, the virus can passing through easily. And this is just uh, our gallery of the research. Okay, we I just skip it. Simple test on our material that this is a water resistant. Okay, skip it. Then it's also good. When I try to blow in this candle, it cannot turn off, even with very with my strength. <laughs> okay, and this is our research activity gallery, and yeah, just showing this one. And just yesterday, CNN television television uh, recording our research activities. Actually, I have a video, but maybe I just skip it maybe <clears throat> if you need it i will show you later this is uh from our national media same showing that uh, about uh, our recent activity on the protection mask this is another news online news <clears throat> this is also another media and okay, I don't should I say happy or unhappy. In the semi in the similar time, there are also some research activity in Japan that doing like a similar work like me. But for sure, the the, the methodology, the technique also different. But the issue is same in order how to kill the COVID nineteen. Okay. Okay. We so this is for my slide ending slide. So we expect that after COVID nineteen. The way forward that the environment will be more cleaner. Okay. <clears throat> so this is my conclusion. Uh, my closing that if we pull it from the David Suzuki, that we have more aware on the environment. And thank you very much. This is my uh, presentation. Thank you so much, uh, Doctor Denny. That is really enlightening. Uh, your uh, pronouncement and your innovations with regards to COVID-19 on the materials used. So I give first the I give first our um, our opportunity to Dr. Glenn Banaguas to be able to tell us the questions we have here for our here attendees. All right. Yes. Um. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh. 
Yusek Mary Rose Magsay. Sorry. So I saw some of the questions here in the chat room. All right. So uh, let me give you the very first one. So one of the questions came from Rosalina Hussein, and this is her question. Can the panel suggest future collaboration amongst uh, ASEAN countries in generating incomes for jobless people, especially during the post COVID-19? So I would like to ask for your comments, uh, Denny and Montfidil. Would you like to give a comment on this? Okay, uh, thank you, Glenn. I think maybe I should start first. Uh, that, uh, you know why? Because, uh, Nowadays, uh, we have a kind of uh, trademark issues, uh, especially on the jobless in certain sectors. So the reason here is not only impacting uh, for that particular sector, but it's also the domino effect for other sectors, like the what we call that the microeconomic uh, uh, influence. So uh, because ASEAN, actually, we are unique because we have uh, our own um, agenda we have our own uh, frameworks that actually we can survive together we have uh, someone actually working as maybe some of them uh, working under the what we call that industrial sectors some of them is uh, uh, actually under the developing on the agricultural some of them actually making a kind of big impacts especially towards to the food supply and so also uh, supplying maybe around uh, uh, 10% or maybe less than 10% of the whole food supply for example so in order for us because this is a focus on our youngsters if they are coming to that kind of you know the situation now after the COVID-19 for example you realize that kind of situation the first thing because HEI is actually the best uh, good system because we have a symbiosis or what we call that ecosystem we train this, uh, the, the, the program not only among uh, our the country but among that kind of the stakeholders especially we have a kind of program on entrepreneurship so this entrepreneurship is actually working closely right now and uh, in utm for example we have a kind of system not only for the teaching uh, and also uh, the output for that kind of uh, learning process but they must also engage to make it a kind of job creation it means that this student been highlighted in a few projects, so they've been highlighted. So I do believe that if ASEAN is very serious, this kind of, uh, you know, uh, making a kind of uh, generating the income, we should actually contribute on this kind of system, which means that we have our own system, for example, like, like Glenn's promoting the uh, ASEAN diplomat. So we do actually be exposed to many things, not only on the economic, but also some kind of uh, communication among us. So the things that we have to bring now is actually to make sure that people uh, knows us, visibles. The visibility among us is very important. The second things, and uh, maybe uh, on the future collaboration, uh, now Glance actually is the, the big key point there in ASEAN. So very good for you to approach, uh, as, especially towards to this kind of activity, promotes the activities, and to treat them as a kind of leaders to be as a leaders because we are not hunting for the job we have to create the job for them okay that's my comment anyway okay Danny. okay thank you um the, the, i would like to highlight uh, what uh, dr fadil said about the create the job so actually in here in lipi we have the center of innovation that usually deal with a new startup or even we try to develop new startup where uh, they adopt a technology like for instance like my my innovation before that i share or um, other technology that maybe people uh, interest um, at the first stage of their activity we usually we didn't charge any uh, how, how to say credit or any uh, the pattern is from our from our center from our institute uh, but usually until they grow until they can expand until they can uh, independent uh, we, we didn't charge any so they can come to our uh, center in in, Ch in Chibinong area near Jakarta area in order to uh, disseminate the technology and to adopt into their uh, technology we already had some uh, good stories 
uh, that uh, entrepreneur, that uh, startup now growing and become an uh, exporter also. So in, in, in our institute we have, so we are very welcome if from the ASEAN uh, society, from the ASEAN institution or the university would like to join in collaboration with uh, please welcome. Philippines will. Philippines also. Sure, yeah, please. So do we have other questions? I think. Uh, Glenn, you, you still fine. mute. <laughs> oh, yes, sorry, I have a question. Oh, well, thank you very much for your answers. Now, um, I, one question. Um, because you gave, both of you provided solutions, innovations for not only for the university, but also for, for your partners. Now, my question is, have you provided the policymakers about the solution? Because it will be much better if you're going to present your innovative solution to address some of the problems that, that the different sectors are experiencing right now. All right. So have you, uh, have you had a chance to talk to them? Have you had a chance to present your work to our policymakers, both in Malaysia and in Indonesia? Uh, in Malaysia case, uh, uh, what we have right now, uh, since we are tied up with our committee, especially towards to the SOP for our students, so uh, uh, at this moment, the policy maker is only, only focused on the SOP for how to operate the university, something like that. At the same time, we actually in our education center, we are uh, now making a kind of survey, some kind of analysis. So actually uh, bring forward to some kind of the committee especially other the mohe for example kpt and one of the uh, platform that we are realized that one is under the my side that i already explained just now this is a true channel that because this is combined with our ministry of higher education especially towards to that that's number one number two um uh, in terms of medical and health for example uh, it is very fortunate for us because we have a very uh, strong collaboration with them uh, and then we also supply to them a kind of our uh, products and innovation that we will use at the frontliners for example at the same at the same time we have a time to talk to them especially in terms of the policy what's the policy towards to that kind of uh, maybe towards to certain sectors especially towards for example like the disinfection chamber so we have a kind of now, uh, what we call that a policy. Nobody actually can guarantee that kind of disinfection until the KOM, I mean the Minister of uh, what we call that the um, health will approve that one. So this is a policy must come through to that kind of situation. So um, in related on that kind of uh, implementation, for example, uh, I think the government still need the university. And the university is actually providing something on the platform so uh, we have a time we still have a time to work with them and also they are now listen to us because they know that we are actually very active in that kind of position so i don't think that uh, and also uh, uh, remember that uh, next year we having a kind of a round table discussion among these uh, kind of uh, stakeholders and this is a time for us to reach them and actually to brief them that's that's actually scenario from malaysia Glenn, do, we have, do we have time for more questions or do you want to email the question? Denny, maybe Denny can answer my question for, uh, at for, the, for Indonesia. Okay, for, for Indonesia, as for, from the Indonesia view, um, maybe I can shortly answer that uh, the, our president is uh, emphasized that the technology should have the impact on the economic, for sure, or create the job, new job. That can be, we can see from the TRL, technological readiness level, that when we when we propose the proposal, the research proposal, that for the TRL level five or more, we have to involve the industry or the society, that they can also, or they, they want to develop our technology, that one. From that, I think it's very clear that the end of our technology should in the society, industry, or et cetera, like that one. Okay, there are other questions here from Shelly Octiana. So uh, I think this is for, for
for the materials for, for you, Denny. How long the mass with combined with copper materials should be used for a day? So she read the news that well, there's a limitation to utilize this particular mass. So is it uh, her question is is it possible to save that particular mass for a day or for how many days? Good question. Thank you. Actually, yes, this is still uh, under research progress. Okay. But from our result, our recent result, the material we just washing in the hot water, 80 to 100 degrees Celsius, and the steering for about one hour or more, the, the pH of the water, after, after that, we, we uh, measure the pH of water, and the water still clear. Actually, I have some, I can show the video I have in my slide. So the water, after the steering, mixing, with uh, with the mass after we coating on it, no any uh, spallation or drop of the material on the water, no any conductivity change. So everything just normal pH on the seven. Okay, for the daily, actually, yeah, the meaning uh, that also can uh, reusable can not uh, influence uh, effect into the medical mass. So we can wash and use uh, many times. Okay, Danny, yes, thank you for your answer because you sound so technical, but I think not all of our participants today are scientists and engineers, so maybe they don't understand the definition of pH. Yes, they don't understand the meaning of pH. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So maybe you can, maybe you can uh, communicate in, in, in a way that people who are non-scientists can understand the, the significance of your research work. Thank you. Should I explain again? No, no need. It's okay. No need. Yes. Yes, Mary Rose. Maybe you have. Do you have other questions or thoughts? <laughs> no, because um, I'm looking at these uh, two great scientists that we have from uh, our Asian countries, and they have a different approach on helping uh, their countries and helping us to their sharing here. And uh, we want to be able to capture as much. Adapt your findings and your sharing to our countries and to the other countries that are present here today. And I, I know we have a very good number of watching in Facebook Live. I've been monitoring it, and it's quite a lot. So uh, please um, share us uh, in layman's terms uh, how you feel these particular things that you're bringing onto the table in uh, helping us in the COVID 19, either now as a solution or for going on in our lives later on. Uh, Dr. Denny, please expand more on what uh, Dr. Glenn is asking for. Thank you. Um, sorry, Russ, I'm not so clear. Can you highlight it? Yes, um, Dr. Glenn, I think you had a question for, for Dr. Denny to expand on a certain uh, topic. Glenn. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, it's very, very formal. <laughs> Glenn is okay. <laughs> By the way, um, the question here is on 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 the utilization of the the, the the copper, right? And that's part of the innovation that was done by Denny and his research team in Lippi in the Indonesian Sciences of uh, uh, Sciences Institute of Sciences. Now, the one of the questions that was raised by our by one of our participants was, okay, how long is it going to what? Uh, how long um, how long for this particular cop uh, copper material will stay and uh, what is the limit time to use this particular mask how many days can they use it uh, for example if you use it today uh, when are we going to use it again all right so you mentioned that you have you just have to boil it all right that's it but how long can we utilize this particular mask will it take a week and then replace it again or it will take a month to replace it again so i think that those are just some of the questions by our well, by one of our participants uh charlie Oksana. thank you very much um, thank you, Dr. Glenn, for delivering the question. So uh, this is a little bit technical. Um, actually, the one that I told you that this, we can remove it. So after this use, your mask, you just clean it, you just washing. So this is still active, no problem. So you can use many times. 
selective many time no problem and we already tested like uh, on the physical testing this material um, no spallation into the water also i mean no easy to drop into the water or soluble or whatever and also the the, the water condition also still normal like that one. even we immerse in the hot condition in the hot water condition and steering uh, so you just have to what you just have to attach it to the to the to the medical mass all right attach it correct not, not medical was not, not not medical mass but the mass we don't ah, have to, mass. We, we we don't have to disturb the medical mass medical mass only for the medical person right okay, okay. for the yeah. society we have to using the cloth one the cloth type not the medical mass. Mass. yes that's that's the, the most important uh the emphasis from our research we don't okay detergent that you're not supposed to use when you wash it no problem uh, for for washing like this mask you just using the hot water and using the normal detergent no problem Sorry. <laughs> so uh, Rose is asking if uh, if it is going to corrode or if any corro uh, corrosion is going to happen since it is copper. So is it is it going to happen? Because Mary Rose is our she's not a scientist, she's our policymaker. <laughs> so maybe you can provide her some information about this. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you, Glenn. Then, uh, okay, uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Denny and the rest. Uh, I think your prototypes, your your products or innovation is uh, strongly supported by under sustainability. You know why? You know why? Because everybody is wasting their medical mass. Correct. So the Correct. numbers of waste is increasing. So I support you. Yes, yes. That's why I emphasize. Correct. Yes, exactly. Thank you, thank you. I think just one last question from from the audience, or from our participants. Does COVID nineteen survive in wastewater? So I do not know if you have tested that. So does does it survive in wastewater or in a municipal wastewater? Based on your research, have you done that? Yes, I ever read some journal, some new article. They can survive in some wastewater. Therefore, we have to treat it, the wastewater also with such kind of the technology. Yes, correct. Okay. Uh, all right. So understand. Uh, actually, uh, we are doing some testing uh, in our facility. We are doing that kind of uh, screening uh, because this is takes a few kind of what we call the evidence, science-based evidence. Uh, but uh, due to this kind of you know the COVID nineteen because this is a virus uh, and then this is clustered under what we call that the organic living, but they don't have a DNA. They only have a RNA. So this kind of RNA, RNA is actually the detected from whatever we wash out from our system so it come to our wastewater so what the people is doing now is they only detect the rna of the virus whether they active or not it is a different story we never knows we have to test that again okay but of course the detection is only to show that the virus is there of course because people use toilets they are using that right the infected person also using the toilets so of course they will be there thank you Correct. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yes. By the way, um, our uh, Mod Fadil, I I, saw, uh, I I love your presentation. You you mentioned a lot of innovations done by uh, UTM, the University of Technology in Malaysia, and they're all fantastic. Now, uh, another uh, another question here is: Is there any possibility that you can also collaborate with the different ASEAN universities? All right. Uh, because that is what we need nowadays. Because definitely, you don't want your innovation to to you know to, just to be there in UTM. And I'm pretty much sure that you really want to share your innovation to to save more lives in Southeast Asia. So, are you willing to what? Are you willing to uh, to collaborate with the different universities in Southeast Asia? And if you are, so what will? How is it going to be done? And how is it going to be implemented? So, thank you. I think uh, the 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 answer should be yes, of course. It's a should be the yes first. The second one very simple. You are actually the who do the host actually doing the collaboration towards us, right? You're connecting us. All the university is actually you are the leaders. 
we already know you because of the we have been gathered all together from Laos, Vietnam, Brunei, whatever it is. We know you. So we don't have any problems. So anybody who actually asking this question, key person here is Dr. Glenn. So whoever actually asking about the collaboration among the universities, he's the best person. He knows everybody in ASEAN. Of course, we have our own platform. I also have some other platform of ASEAN, but the biggest actually from Glenn. So I think that question is very good and suitable for you. <laughs> I'm very agree with you, uh, Prof. Fadil. Yes, the answer from me also, for sure, yes. We are willing to collaborate. We are willing to have the research collaboration with among uh, Southeast Asian countries, for sure, yeah. <laughs> and the key person, once again, you, Glenn, please. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I think we, we have no more time. So one last question, um, Her Excellency, Mary Rose Magsaysay. Uh, there's another question from Marmi. Uh, uh, do we ha do we have to recycle uh, the uh, I, do, because th thus we can do recycling process of waste mass? Do, the, I think the pro the question is, do we need to recycle the 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 waste mass for treatment? So is there any possibility to recycle it? I think that is, and the question is for you again, Denny. <laughs> no, for the medical waste, it's just one. After that, you should destroy it, you should cut it with the scissor and burn. No, no way. But if the mask, for sure, but cloth mask, the normal cloth mask, only four hour, three to four hour. After that, you have to uh, change again and change again. Okay, that's from my answer. <laughs> Okay, Her Excellency, Miss Mary Rose, okay, last words or for your thoughts. I think uh, we should ask our dear speakers, what, are they, what is their takeaway for our attendees today? Can we start with uh, Dr. Fadil? Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mary and the rest. I think uh, as a conclusion, what we are doing right now is actually try to make sure that we are not alone here. Everybody is working their, their jobs and they are working their responsibility. And as a higher education institution, we actually as a point actually, to bring this kind of link between those kind of infected, the stakeholders and everything. That's number one. Number two, we know that the innovation and what, whatever the products that we develop from the uh, university shall not be as a, on shelf. It should be translated to the community. It must be someone translated back and how they can use that things. So some of them is actually know that it's very brilliant and everything, but they are not being translated back to the community. So this is the agenda that what, what we are doing and what we have to do. Because of COVID-19 is actually telling us something. You must actually share and you must actually know each other. That's something that I want to uh, make it a closing. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dr. Mary. I would like to quote the David Suzuki, the environmentalist from Japan, that he told that if we pollute the air, water, and soil that keep us alive and well, and destroy the biodiversity that allows a natural system to function, no amount of money will save us. So this is to emphasize that the very important of the environmental sustainability. And the point number two that I would like to share, I would for my conclusion, through collaboration, hard work and prayer from all parties, so we will be able to handle the epidemic of the COVID-19 so that the situation can return to normal or maybe the new normal. And please remind there is you in solution. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Of course, uh, I, I, I give the floor back to our dearest host, Dr. Glenn Banagwa. What? Uh Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, so again, thank you very much for, for your participation. So we look forward for the 21st Derfordshire webcast lecture series. And, and that's going to be on June 12 and June 26, uh, Friday, same time, 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock. And this time we're going to feature 
the ASEAN's Amazing Women in Science. So uh, that will be on the 12th, and uh, the last and the next one will be on the last week, last Friday of the month of June. So again, thank you very much, and hope to see you all on the the next 21st on the on the next 21st and 22nd there for sure webcast lecture series thank you very much thank you thank you thank you mary thank you dr glenn thank you dr glenn thank you terima kasih terima kasih thank you thank you for your presentation thanks